Okay, here we go. The very exciting, the wonderful, reliability, and validity. Now these are extremely important, all joking aside, when looking at and assessing the quality of experiments. Without an experiment, if experiment is not reliable, it is not valid, and it is not worth, uh, or we can't make any conclusions from it um, about human behavior. So, reliability. Question to consider, are your parents a reliable source on whether you are a responsible person? Are your teachers a reliable source on your academic ability and their subject? Yes to some point, no in other ways, because they own, your parents only see you part of the time. They don't know the type of responsible person you are outside of their sight. Teachers can see a reliable on your academic ability in certain tests and certain abilities, but overall they can make an assessment, but is it completely reliable? No, uh, but it is but the better the teacher does of uh, doing a variety of different assessments and record keeping and, and the more they take the, the last work, then it becomes more a more reliable source of where you are right then and what you know. Are tests you take in your different classes reliable measures of what you know in the subject? To a point, yes. Um, uh, but again, tests are only part of it. Uh, sometimes free writes other ways. As long as the assessments in the class are a variety where you're writing, you're doing multiple choice, you're doing many different things, uh, the teacher will get at what you know. Uh, if the assessments are all one note, one type, one ability, then, um, then they're a little bit less reliable. Okay, the research process. Validity, reliability, ecological validity, and cross-cultural validity are all things we're going to look at. Okay, overall the goal is credibility. Reliability plus validity equals credibility and the ability to replicate the findings. Reliability, is it consistent? Does it produce the same findings in the same circumstances if you replicate the experiment? So basically, it's reliable if you can replicate it. Okay? Validity. Does the experiment measure what is intended to measure? And there are many different ways to look at how valid an experiment is or different types of validity that we will take a look at. The first layer of ana a layer of analysis, reliability. Think of reliability as the four R's. Reliability requires replicable results. If it can be replicated, it is a reliable experiment. If it cannot be replicated and get the same results at the same time, then it is not. If you can replicate the research and get the same results, then the findings are reliable. Reliability. We could just measure something using a piece of string, but it wouldn't be very accurate because we would just be hoping that we cut it at the right place or looking at the experiment. We need to be able to measure or observe something time after time and produce the same or similar results. In that case, a tape measure is going to be much better at that type of thing. I want to measure the intelligence. If some person sits the test on several occasions and the results change each time, then the test, that test lacks reliability. If they take the same exact test, they should do around the same. Or if they take the same type of test, they should score around the same. And if they're scoring um, completely different or, you know, there's a, there's a definite difference in the scores, then the test is not reliable. The test also lacks validity because the scores are meaningless. If something is not reliable, it can't be valid. If I test my participants again several months later and their scores remain consistent, I can say the test is reliable, but it might still lack validity. The second score might just be measuring what a person has learned since taking the first test. Does the driving test measure your competence? Oh, let's see that car one more time. Isn't that a beauty? Okay. Does a driving test measure your competence to drive on the road, or is it a measure of your ability to pass the driving test? Would you be able to pass it again in six months' time? Would you do better? Is it a reliable and valid test, especially if you had to drive this beauty of a car? So, most of the time, most of us believe that the driving test is a measure of your competence. However, 
you are just driving once. Um, and would you be able to replicate it time after time after time? Would you see this as bullying or horseplay in the playground? You would see this from your own subjective viewpoint. We're biased by experience and expectation. Observers must agree about what they are observing. They need to use standardized behavioral categories. Otherwise, it's not reliable. Improving researcher reliability. Inner rater reliability. This refers to the consistency of a researcher's behavior. A researcher should produce similar test results or make similar observations or carry out interviews in the same way on more than one occasion. Now, this is important when we're looking at experiments to make sure they do this, but this is also very important when we're considered doing your own IA. If you don't remember anything else from this presentation, please remember that you have to do everything exactly the same in your experiment. And so you script everything. You pay attention to how you do everything because you want your results to replicate what you know and what you've done here. How much longer before I can get in the pub and relax my facial muscles is the second one. So, thanks for part. Thanks for taking part today. Any problems, I'll be right over here. Take your time. And this one is, let's get this over with fast as you can. You're going to get completely different results because the, the participant is approaching it in completely different ways. Inner rater reliability. Uh, consistency between different researchers working on the same study is very important for reliability. There should be a high positive correlation between the scores of different observers. We're going to look at an experiment where they had to take, um, even like when the subjects are observing somebody, the people, that, the people that they're observing, the people that they're working with, have to have high positive correlation between their behaviors. Otherwise, we can't trust that it's the participants that are changing things or the, the variables that are changing things, but rather it's just uh, because... Um, there's issues with the test and the reliability of the people observing. In observational studies, this is known as inner, inner observer reliability. Observers have to agree on what they see and carry out the same procedure. Okay, today's training session for researchers, increase reliability by standardizing instructions, carry out a pilot study to improve procedures and materials, and these are both things that you could do before your IA. Carry out a pilot study can just be with brothers or sisters or people in, the, in this class. Uh, and it will help you figure out what you need to do to make sure that the good study, the study that you're planning on doing, will, will give you good results. Uh, you'll be thoroughly trained in the use of materials and procedures prior to our study taking place. So, review what we've done so far. Reliability and a rate of reliability. Um, so, can you tell me what reliability is? Can you tell me inner rate of reliability? If not, maybe you should go back and watch those sections again. Validity. Now, I am really concerned that with reliability that you understand the four R's of reliability. Um, the inner rate of reliability is important and is a good example, uh, but it's more important that you just understand the basic idea of it. Now, validity, you do need to know the different ones we go over here. Are techniques used to collect data in tests, questionnaires, interviews, and observations, measuring what is claimed? Can we trust any effect that has been found to be the results of manipulating our independent variable and not from another unwanted variable? And if a measurement is not reliable, then our research cannot be valid or true. So basically, if what we're using is not reliable, it does not produce the same reputable results, then it's not valid. Um, so that is one way to, to discover validity right away every time. Internal validity. The tool is measuring what it is intending, intending to measure. External validity. The findings can be generalized beyond the context of the research situation. So internal validity, the tool is measuring what it is intending to measure. That when we uh, create, we do an operational definition, that that operational definition isn't too narrow, or isn't too far off and that we really understand what we are measuring. And then external validity, the idea of the finding that can be generalized beyond the context of the research situation. If we're trying to find out if religious people are more helpful than non-religious people, the way we then test that, um, whether we see if they would return money or if they walk a grandmother across the street, um, or however we choose to test that, the way we test that is only going to give us a certain part of what it means to be helpful. 
And so therefore, um, we have to be very careful in how we define these things. Otherwise, we will not fully understand it. Review, reliability, interrelated reliability, external and internal validity. If you are able to answer these at this point, you're great. If not, you may want to rewind and go over those again. Content validity. Does the content of a test cover everything in the area of interest? Does the experiment on helpful, does it have enough different ways of looking at whether religious people are more helpful or not? Does it look at multiple ways that people are helpful or does it only measure one? If it measures a group of those, then you can be in uh, much better shape. More rigorous experts in the field systematically examine the tools, components, and compare them with set standards. Um, and just beyond just tests, though, also looking at the way the, the, the study is measured. Does it measure multiple things or is it just measuring one element? Predictive validity. Uh, we can skip that one. Temporal validity. Um, and really what we're talking about here is, is this the findings due to the fact that we did it in Victorian times um, on whether somebody would be helpful um, or whether people would use more crass language in Victorian times or now, um, looking at whether uh, drug use and those types of things. Well, drug use here might have been the same as it is in this decade, but really, can we look at can we look at that? Oh, Mr. Ash, we'd be delighted to say those lines are the same size. Is conformity more important here than it is here? Um, does it look here that you really want to go against the conformity here? Do our findings endure over time, or are they era dependent? Population validity. This is an extremely important one. Can we generalize the findings of our research participants to other population groups? Population validity is, is the population um, representative of, of our target population or not? It's just another way of saying representative um, that our target, that our subjects are representative of the target population. And really when we're looking at this, it's also the idea that do we have enough people um, in our subject groups to be able to make any generalizations? Context validity, better known as ecological validity. So this is a major one along with population validity. Uh, ecological validity is one that we have to constantly ask ourselves every single time we look at an experiment. Can we apply our findings to other contexts and situations out of the research setting? Meaning, does the way we, we structure, the, um, structure the experiment in real life? Does it apply to real life? And can we take what real life situation we did here and extend it to how many different situations can we extend it to? Um, lab studies oftentimes struggle with ecological validity because they are not real. They're in a lab setting, they're not in a real life setting. Whereas field experiments have a much higher and better ecological validity. You want me to pretend to do sums as well as talk? I'll do it for two bananas. You want me to falsify your accounts? I'll do it for 200 pounds, 200,000 pounds. Meaning, does this experiment equate to this experiment? Does what we're doing here, pretend to do sums for bananas, equate with this guy falsifying accounts? Cross-cultural validity. Would you see this type of behavior across cultures? Yes. We do see this behavior, not for football, but for soccer. Do we see this type of behavior in different um, countries? Yes, we see it in different cultures around sports. We can say that consistently. Now, the sport itself changes, but the fan and the way the fans get into it does not. Okay, let's look at this. So, is the research relevant across cultures? Ethnocentrism, the all about me complex. If it is too much about your own culture and not about others, then can we really um, generalize outside of, the, outside of the culture? And this is an important one. Now, cross-cultural studies will look at cross-culture and just cultural um, sensitivity and all of that when we're looking at studies. But is it cross-culturally valid? Meaning, if I did this experiment in the United States and then I went and did it in London and then I went and did it in New Delhi, in, uh, India, um, and that's in Asia, for those of you who need a little 
uh, or I go to China, or I go to Japan, or I go to different places with different types of cultures, and then I go to South Africa versus the Sudan, or um, I go to Bolivia versus Bolivia, or and then um, Brazil, Argentina. Am I going to get the same results on the experiment, or is it going to change? And we will look at some uh, cross-cultural experiments um, this year and next year that, that look at helping behaviors and other types of behaviors across many different cultures. Okay. So, we would like to do a study to see if people go to soccer matches for the rest, for the rest of the world. But would that be a good one here? Um, gender validity. Can we generalize the results of the study to males, females, and the neutral people? If we did a study on cheerleaders, can we generalize that behavior upon football players or football? Can we generalize that to women? Or in, but in FFA, we see a much, much uh, more gender neutral group. And so what you see here is the idea that is it gender valid, meaning that if I did the study on all women, can I then transfer that information to men? And most of the time not. So we want to know the makeup of men and women in a group. We also want to know the age um, so that we can see if it's population valid, if it's just college students versus um, a wide range of ages, or if it's just children, and then we're trying to apply that knowledge to adults, there's going to be a problem there. Um, so gender, cross-cultural, population, and ecological validity are the major ones here. Um, content validity is also important. Some other validities are important, but those are the major ones that we want to make sure we pay attention to. So review. Go over this type of review right here. If you are, if you do well on this, then this video has been a success for you. If not, you might want to take a look at it. Uh, we are going to test your knowledge, or we're going to practice the knowledge from this video in two different ways. One, we are going to continue the experiment, the Halloween experiment, and we are going to look at its validity um, in several different ways. Then, we are going to um, take a look at uh, some other, um, other ways of measuring validity. We'll, we'll do... We'll do a test where we look at all the terms and kind of put them together and see which experiments are going to bring about certain validities and which, where they're going to struggle um, and do kind of a matching type um, practice there. So I hope you had a great homecoming weekend. I uh, hope good and I will see you on Tuesday.